What if road cycling had no rules, no weight limit, no geometry restrictions, no double diamond frame rule? How fast could bikes go? How light could they be? And what wild machines would designers finally unleash? Welcome to Just Ride Bikes, I'm David, and today we are tearing up the UCI rulebook to explore a world where bike tech isn't held back. From radical designs that have been banned over the years to futuristic concept racing and other cycling disciplines, this is what road cycling could look like if nothing was off limits. Just don't tell UCI. Let's dive in. Most road bikes still look pretty similar. Two triangles, two wheels, and drop handlebars. That's not just tradition, it's regulation. The UCI, the governing body of the sport, enforces a strict set of rules for what counts as a legal race bike. It's got a thick race book that defines what a racing bicycle can and can't be. And for the last 20 years, that book has ballooned in size. And for the last decade, you've probably seen a small sticker on race bike frames. That's why nearly every pro bike now comes with a UCI approved sticker on a frame and why truly radical designs rarely make it to the start line of the Tour de France. It also means brands can't build wild, wild concepts for their riders. The bike has to be commercially available for you and I to buy. And right now, there are around 140 approved frames on the list, which anybody can view on the UCI website. I'll put a link to it down below. Before those strict rules were locked in, there was a wild era of experimentation in the 1990s. Take the Lotus 108, for example. It ripped up the rule book with a monocoque carbon frame and ultra aggressive riding position. It had dramatically lower drag than anything else at the time and definitely helped propel Chris Borman to some phenomenal records and a gold medal. And the 1990s hour record battle between Chris Borman on his Lotus 108 and Graham O'Bree on his old faithful, a handmade bicycle, with extreme riding positions like the Crouch and the Superman aimed at sliding through air and going as fast and far as possible. But these radical designs pushed the UCI too far and they clamped down hard in the late 1990s and the early 2000s. Bikes like the Pinarello Espada, where a small 650c front wheel for aero gains were outlawed. In their place came rules saying a road bike should look like a road bike. That golden age of design experimentation was over. And that's a real shame because as a teenager at the time, watching this unfold, both the athletic endeavor and also the technological arms race was both fascinating. They were inseparable in that pursuit of more speed and better performance and gold medals. But that doesn't mean that imagination has to stop because not all forms of cycling are governed by the UCI. In triathlon, for example, the rules are much looser and the bike design reflects this freedom. The Kdex tri-bike, for example, completely ditches the traditional frame shape in favor of maximum aerodynamic efficiency. Its profile is more like a spaceship than a bike. Also, the Cervelo P5X and the Diamondback Andine go even further, using a beam-style frame and built-in storage to cheat the wind at every possible angle. And these bikes are perfectly legal in triathlon, but very much illegal in UCI road racing. The difference in design freedom is clear. Where triathlon bikes are radical and creative, UCI legal road bikes are conservative and conformist. If you really want to see what's possible when you ditch all the rules, look no further than a fared recumbent bike. Back in 1933, the Velocar, a recumbent, broke the hour record and the UCI banned it almost immediately, halting what could have been a very different path for cycling innovation. The latest modern fared recumbents have now pushed the human powered hour record to over 92 kilometers per hour. That's nearly 40 kilometers per hour faster than Filippo Ganna's UCI legal record of 56.79 kilometers. The secret, a fully reclined ride position like an F1 car, full aero fairings and zero rule book constraints. And it shows just how much speed is left on the table in traditional bicycle design. Then there's a weight limit. 6.8 kilograms, a rule imposed in 2000, supposedly for safety. 
but it's never based on any science at all. It's just an arbitrary number plucked out of thin air. And modern road race bikes that you can buy in a shop are now routinely under this limit. Like the giant TCR Advance SL, for example, at 6.4 kilos, the Factor O2 VAM at 6.6, or a specialized Athos, which weighs less than six kilograms, even with disc brakes. There are even bills of the Athos under five kilograms, and UK hill climb bikes are a special breed and they routinely go super low weight. Those bikes are just outliers though. Most bikes aren't exceptionally lightweight. The top M ones maybe, but in the mid range, they're not super lightweight because bike brands haven't been compelled to really chase weight because what's the point when it's a weight limit for the pros, which us amateurs do follow as well. But it has pushed them to chase other innovations as well, like disc brakes wide tires and better aerodynamics instead of chasing grams. So that weight limit, while based on no science at all, may have inadvertently given us better bikes as bike brands have focused on the other attributes of performance rather than just weight. That said, with today's materials and engineering science, many argue that the rule is outdated and restricts what's possible. The rule was introduced because of safety concerns around super lightweight and fragile carbon frames, but these days we know how tough and strong and reliable carbon fiber is. So it probably is entirely possible to build a super lightweight carbon bike that has the stiffness, the compliance, and the safety and durability you want from such a bike. And the weight limit really highlights a lack of understanding or appreciation for technology from the UCI, in my opinion. Let's imagine what a road bike could look like with zero rules. And I think smart integration and more electronics. We have sensors all over the frame, wheels and tires and give you live telemetry mid race. Think Formula One, but on two wheels. There have been attempts at smart bikes in the past, but they've always failed to really catch on or really deliver the promise of that technology. With no rules in place, road bikes can finally get proper electronically controlled suspension. We've seen the benefits of big tires for smoothing out rough roads and modern carbon frames able to bend and flex and be compliant when dealing with rough roads. And most of our roads are pretty crappy these days. And with sensors all over the bike, the wheels and tires, the suspension will work only when it needs to and give you more performance, more comfort and more speed over parve and crappy roads or gravel, but then ride like a normal rigid carbon road bike on the smooth stuff. Carbon fiber has ruled for decades, but a rule-free future could unlock more future material benefits. Imagine futuristic materials that can adapt the stiffness based on how you're riding. So when you come into a sprint, the stiffness ramps up, so it's super stiff and responsive. And when you hit the parve, the frame stiffness can be detuned, allowing a more compliant and comfort-focused ride. Because carbon fiber is amazing and the blend of stiffness, performance, and comfort has improved so much, but there's a limit to how much carbon fiber can offer both stiffness for power transfer and sprinting, but also compliance and comfort as well. We've seen how fast recumbents are because the rider is essentially lying down on the bike. How about embracing some of that element of positioning on a road bike? Maybe not as extreme, but riders are getting more low and airy all the time, really trying to cheat the wind. So somewhere between those two extremes could be a future road bike tech avenue to explore if the UCI rules weren't in the way of allowing manufacturers to break free from the double diamond frame design that is a big restriction on ultimately aerodynamics and how fast a rider can push through the air. How about taking aerodynamics to the max? Full body fairings over the bike and rider would drastically reduce turbulence. Bikes would start to look more like torpedoes than traditional frames, but we've seen how much aero has been pushed and you saw how relaxed the rules around aerodynamics and the tube profiles allowed, and you have a ruling against fairings, but imagine that ruling was removed and you could have a fairing on a bike and totally fair the bike and the rider. Imagine how fast you go. Imagine how fast the peloton would be. Imagine how fast you'd be on a Sunday club run. And how about removing the weight limit? With no 6.8 kilo weight limit, bikes could easily, I reckon, hit five kilos or even four kilos with no real downside in terms of integrity, structural rigidity, stiffness, and compliance. The technology is there. The bike manufacturers have no impetus to go lighter because the rules restrict it. But remove the rules, and it would be amazing to see how light you could go. And I know lots of people watching are weight weenies. 
And lastly, in a throwback to the 1990s and the Lotus 108, how about beam bikes, monocoques, or fully enclosed designs that get away from the tube and double diamond frame design and re-optimize aerodynamics without worrying about a traditional looking bike. Essentially, bikes would look, ride, and perform very differently to how they do now, but they also be massively faster and way more efficient and lighter as well. So how much faster could bikes be without the rules? We know that fair recumbents are almost twice as fast in the hour record, and we know bikes can be much lighter as well. And we know that most of these changes are currently banned. So should the UCI open the door to more innovation? Do you really want to see a bike designed with no rules? Or are you happy with how bikes look and perform now? Are you happy that rules stop road bikes from innovating down a path you don't want to see? Let me know your thoughts by dropping a comment down below. And if you want to see a review of the giant T-Shirt Advanced SL, one of the lightest road bikes you can currently buy, then watch the video right up here.